If you watch the channel, you've already seen me upgrade the rear sway bar on my 9th gen Accord. I did it when I installed the strut bar in the front on the car. You will know if you watch that video that it was the 22 millimeter Progress Tech or Progress Group. Like there's a bunch of different variations of the same company. It says Progress Group some places, some places Progress Tech. Anyways, it's their 22 millimeter bar. I thought I was gonna be happy and overall, I was very happy from the stock option. The stock option is very thin and the 22 millimeter was a fantastic upgrade previously. However, I'm an aggressive driver. I like performance and I should have known I would have wanted the biggest option available, which is the 25.4 millimeter from the same company. And that's what we have today. Today, we're gonna to be installing the 25.4 millimeter sway bar in the rear from progress tech but also i promised you when i did that video i said i'm gonna do adjustable end links for the car and here they are from the same company they are offered for for the ninth gen accord which is fantastic i like certain things i like to keep from the same company and it's nice to see that they do offer a rear option on this car so today we're installing the bigger sway bar and uh, we're also installing the adjustable end links or sway bar uh, sway bar links whatever you want to call it. for doing this job you're going to want to jack up the car on our car if you're not aware there is a tow hook in the back that you can use as a jack point and then of course put your jack stance underneath i also put my wheels just in case Obviously, if the car falls, yes, I'm going to be sad that it damaged the wheels, but at the same time, I'll be happy that it saved my life. Not ideal situation, but better it is. Uh, and uh, you are going to want to take off both wheels because you're dealing with the end links. And of course, make sure that one of your front wheels has chucks on the front and the back of it. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into removing the previously upgraded one and putting in the new one. First I started out by loosening the sway bar mounts that are attached to the subframe. I was able to loosen the bolts for the mounts just by simply using a wrench on the top of the bolt. However, ultimately I did need to use a power tool and a wrench to fully be able to undo them and remove them. I did make a mistake by fully removing these bolts for the mounts. I should have actually just loosened them and left them on to help me then undo the sway bar end links. The reason for that is because if you don't have the bolts holding on to the mount, the sway bar wants to move around while you're trying to fight the rusted bolt. After I realized that I needed to leave those in, I put them back in and then I started working on the end links. Of course, mine are rusted because I live in an area where they use salt during snow days and due to that, there is quite a bit of rust on these end links. I had to use a lot of penetrating fluid and something with good leverage. Now, of course, a breaker bar would work here, but I have this Ryobi right angle impact and so I used it to help me undo the bolt manually and then I was able to use it to finish off taking it off automatically. I did have to peel back the rubber cover for the bolt slash ball joint to give me some room to get more grip on the vice grip so I could have good grip to finish loosening the bolt. And just like I showed in the old sway bar video, I was using my vice grip method of holding the back of the end link so that the end link bolt or bushing does not move around while trying to remove the nut. The way the end links are set up, they have a nut and then technically the bolt section you would put an allen in there and use a wrench however because of the rust that method does not work so i do recommend the uh, vice grips this will damage the end links but because we're replacing them it doesn't matter
and just like in the last video taking out the sway bar was a little bit challenging especially since i have an aftermarket exhaust the bigger exhaust and the thicker sway bar do mess with, with each other enough to the point where it makes it a little tough however i was able to take off the sway bar but to put on the new one it was not going to happen and i did have to take off just the one tail section of the left driver's side section to give me clearance to be able to fully put the new sway bar on with a lot of heat penetrating fluid and because one of the nuts was so rusted it basically wasn't a nut anymore so i had to use an extractor kit i was finally able to get everything off and honestly it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be As you can see, the mounting kit is exactly the same as the 22 millimeter, which was great for me. I was able to just simply use the new mounting stuff and get rid of the old stuff because obviously it's rusted to mount up to the new bar. With the previous bar, I did have to drill the holes out so that the new bolts fit through it. Luckily, the new bar uses the same bolts, so the same holes will work and no more drilling was needed. This new bar does have one additional feature. It has those tabs or rings that you can see on it that prevent the bushing from sliding further or even prevent the bar from sliding left and right too much the other bar I do not remember having that and so basically what I had to do was make sure that the bushing was to the left on the driver's side to the left of that ring and to the right of it on the passenger side basically near the bend of the end of the sway bar I did also make sure to utilize the grease provided by the progress tech company both on the inside of the bushing where it's gonna sit on the sway bar and on the outside where it's gonna sit on the mount just to help it live a little longer and if you need the specs on what size hole to drill simply you can look at it says it in the instructions with the sway bar or you can watch the old video and i used a step bit because that was the best way to get for me the best results also i made sure that the mounts for the sway bar were not tight tight so that way i could connect them easily to the end links as for the end links i did also have to remove them from the subframe section and i used the same method as i did removing them from the sway bar using vice grips and a ratchet with a deep socket when I got the old sway bar links off, I brought them over to the new ones and made sure that the new ones were in the same orientation and the same length as the old ones, just simply because my car is in that drop and the stock size works for now. I will later on mess with it a little bit more because I know you can get a little bit more stiffness utilizing the adjustable end links. When putting on the new end link, there is a bracket that I did have to remember to put in between it and where it connects to on the subframe connection. Because these are new end links, I am able to use the method that you are supposed to use, which is an Allen key and a wrench. Now the wrench is a ratcheting wrench, of course, and for the Allen key, I am using a long T-handle style. On the bottom one, I did have to use a right angle style because there was not enough room for the long T-handle. And I was able to figure out that I could have used a power clip to help remove that sway bar end link from the subframe using the vice grip instead of a ratchet. Made it a little easier. After everything was connected together, the sway bar and the links, I made sure that the middle part of the end links that is adjustable was tight with the two nuts that sit above and below the middle part. I used a adjustable wrench for the middle to hold the middle while using a regular wrench to tighten up the two nuts and then of course i finished off with tightening up the brackets for the sway bar that hold it to the subframe i did make sure that the sway bars were sitting as far towards the back of the car just because the brackets are adjustable and i wanted to make sure they were all sitting equally the same so i just pulled them back to make sure on both sides correctly before putting back the one part of the exhaust i did have to replace the gasket and the bolts and nuts because obviously everything was rusted as for the bolts i used 10 by 1.5 um, stainless steel bolt and of course the nuts and washers that would go with that all stainless steel as for the gasket i got a two and a half inch gasket 
not a steel one but still it was last minute luckily i was able to get anything and this was thanks to sid at mxpi tuning he was able to get me one of these very last minute to get the exhaust installed back on before the track day of course i also used permatex copper gasket maker that works on exhaust gaskets this way this gasket that is not all metal has the best possible seal and this part is very messy yes you're gonna wear gloves but you're still gonna get it on you because I definitely got it all over my hoodie. And I figured while I was at it, I was gonna remove these two, one on each side of the car, weights that sit on the subframe, really for NVH, and I don't care about the NVH, and I'd rather just reduce that weight by a little bit, so I did by removing them. Of course, it would have been smart to do this while the tires were off, but I forgot and very quickly remembered that I wanted to do that, so I went and did it. They are located right above where the sway bar mounts to the subframe on each side. I gotta say it's either a placebo effect or I can definitely notice even with the slightly stiffer rear sway bar and that's all we did um, I can still feel that there is slightly less body roll on the roads now obviously I can't really tell much on the roads because there's no tight turns that I'm taking at high speeds however even just going at lower speeds around like for instance here if I go on this churn at, I don't know, what are we doing, 25, it, it just feels planted. It feels like the body's just standing still, like it's not adjusting at all, which is crazy. Um, don't get me wrong, it felt amazing with the 22 millimeter for sure. I'm just really impressed on how much it's... Uh, how much better it feels with this 25.4 mil now like I said it could be a placebo thing granted I've been driving my 4Runner I haven't been driving uh, the Honda so you know there is that too so maybe I'm just used to that car and uh, just don't remember this car that well but I've driven this car a few times recently and I feel that there is less body roll i could be wrong it could be a placebo effect but listen at the end of the day i do wish i just went with the 25.4 millimeter in the first place i don't know why i didn't i guess i was overthinking it some people online were saying oh it's too stiff it will make you oversteer while you're driving and you could get in an accident like i was just listening to stupid things that i shouldn't have listened to regardless i'm excited that i've done it man i missed this car i'm excited i've done it anyways and i'm really curious to see how messing around with the adjustable links will help also eliminate uh the body roll and help with that because that's the beauty of the adjustable links yes uh they help uh have proper height when you go really low with your suspension but then also at the same time they can help uh provide a little more stiffness with the sway bar as well so which is fantastic i am going to pay attention to them to make sure um, they don't loosen up i am a little concerned that they might loosen up and i might end up losing my end link the way it's set up but uh you know we'll see how that goes this thing feels amazing I am also going to be doing a front sway bar, I actually already have it, it's going to be the TLX front sway bar, uh, according to my caliper it's 26 millimeters, according to the internet it's 29 millimeters, but I measured it on a few sections of that sway bar and it's definitely registering at 26, regardless though because the stock one I believe is either 16 or 19 millimeters, so we're still getting a really good upgrade, I believe it's 16, stock one 16 millimeters, so we're still getting a really good upgrade so i am interested to see how much better this car feels around turns once we have the front sway bar on combined with the rear one and also for the front sway bar i have adjustable links 
for that as well. I'm super stoked because we have a track day session coming up here soon. It's coming around the corner. The front sway bar is a little involved in getting it installed because you do have to drop the subframe. So I'm hoping that that doesn't cause too many issues and we're able to get that done pretty easily so we can get ready for this track day and i do also have new performance tires i have been asked before if i'm going to put any performance tires on the honda since i do autocross and track days in it <clears throat> and i did say i was gonna as long as i could have the, to find the money and uh i found some that were really good deal are they the best option possible? No, but you guys will see that in an upcoming video as well. I'm stoked to try that out. I'm in the combination of the new sway bars and those tires. I'm really interested to see how much better this thing performs around. We're going back to Blackhawk Farms. So we have some, we've been there before. We have some times there that are already registered for this car on how much how quickly we've gone around the track so now i'm curious to see what uh, uh their 200 treadwear performance tires and with these sway bars how much better this car can actually go around the track as for which option should you go with um honestly the 22 millimeter is a fantastic upgrade and you don't need to go more than that. You're gonna get great performance out of that. If you're somebody that's not like me, that wants to drive aggressively and <clears throat> drive aggressively and be uh, on a racetrack or autocross or just spirited driving, um, pretty aggressive spirited driving on the road, uh, then the 22 millimeter is perfect. If you want the most possible performance out of your car, then yes, absolutely go with the 25.4 millimeter. As for the installation, as I mentioned earlier, it's very simple. It's exactly like the 22 millimeter. And since I already had the 22 millimeter, I was lucky and I didn't have to drill out those holes. It's not that it's hard, but I'm just happy I didn't have to do it again. Outside of that, I am happy with what I have uh, done here. And uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's a placebo thing, but uh, it does feel good around some of these corners if you have a stock exhaust you might not need to do the things that i had to do with my exhaust you might be able to just leave it on there and get this fully on uh, the old one uninstalled and the new one installed however if you do or at least for the four cylinder if you have a six cylinder i believe those cars have a two and a half inch exhaust like my car does which might cause you to have to drop that exhaust to be easily able to put on the sway bar and take it off. So keep that in mind because that was the biggest pain and especially if you're living somewhere where you get snow and they use salt and you have driven the car in the salt, your stuff could be very much rusted and stuff like that. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Thank you for watching and uh, See you guys in the next one.